Well, I discovered very early in my life that I thought with my eyes. I seemed to be able to see two realities, the persona and the psyche. And they would uh, reveal certain things to me. I seem to have the ability to uh, think with my eyes. I, I could almost read a person's character or read their psyche and uh, identify the persona, which is a, uh, is a mask, or, and how different the mask was from the psyche. I seem to intuitively understand that things were in conflict, that, that contradiction was part of life. And to me, Again, intuitively, I wasn't able as a child because I didn't have the vocabulary to explain what was happening. It was a journey, it was a flow. Everything was an adventure because it was new. I was in a, in a state of almost uh, constant awe. But it was a discovery, and I was sort of filing these things away in my in my memory. At least intuitively, was was my destination to be uh, an observer. Uh, I use a metaphor many times: is that uh, that the individual is uh, watching a parade say a Fellini parade and people are in costumes and lots of color and lots of music and, and sound and, and things are synchronized. But I'm an observer, but I discovered that I'm not only an observer, I'm in the parade too. I realized my paintings went through stylistic changes, but I want to see the continuity. So I, I built this rather large gallery area, not as a public space, but it was for me to see the journey, to see if I could articulate it. And it's a way of looking at life from a, uh, a, a, a different perspective. It's really the perspective of our moment in time. I developed as an artist, not by chance. It seems to be uh, almost faded. I was born in Chicago by luck. My parents moved to Hyde Park. We lived in housing that were, uh, that were designed for the World's Fair in 1893. So by chance, a group of graduate students started an art center in my building. And I would go downstairs and take art classes for seven cents a week, which included materials. That was my fate. I don't know. I, it was just, why would everything sort of fall in a place like that? It seemed the direction of my life was, was art. But I was always concerned about who I really was. I discovered I was an artist that was really part of my time period. I, I was representing the emotional, social, cultural, and political issues of our moment in science, but this was intuitively. I think intuitively, I think visually. I, I don't develop theories until uh, I get a number of of things in, in place, but the theories are not set in stone because everything is in motion, everything is in flow, and how you absorb these these issues, they are they reveal themselves, they reveal profundity. So you may think that we're inexperienced in understanding or dealing 
with metaphors, but that is not true because we all dream. And dreaming is a way of understanding the evolution of time. It's done in metaphors because life is filled with contradictions, and the multiplicity of choices. So metaphors are extremely important. And this art is very appropriate and very unique to the time period because it reflects to our moment in time without anyone really explaining why. Other time periods, uh, artists had different functions. They were propagandists for, uh, for the wealthy, for the influential, for leaders. And they'd be displayed with all their finery, you know, all their wealth. The artists would spend more time on their clothing and jewels than other parts of the body. The artists would be trained as tradesmen. They would do frescoes and large paintings, and historical paintings, but just all propaganda. They were indentured servants. And occasionally uh, someone with imagination, self-confidence, and a unique wisdom would emerge, come to the surface. Michelangelo, Rembrandt, Tintoretto. But I think one of the first modern painters that was sort of self-made of, motivated, that was really reflecting the time period was Vermeer. And what did he do, 26 paintings in his lifetime? And all very small. Compare that to a Rubens. You know, he had you know, 10 assistants maybe. A giant painting, and Rubens probably didn't even touch it. So uh, they were essentially propagandists, but the artists today are meant to be sages, poets, somehow to see the big picture. But also part of my, uh, my life experience is that I was a stained glass window designer. I got the job by, by accident. It was, it was almost faded. And part of my training was to copy the stained glass windows of Chart. And what the uh, windows were about was metaphor. Most of the people were illiterate. They read with their eyes. And uh, I slowly began to absorb that. Then I realized that uh, the work of art was content-based content through metaphors. I put all my paintings together. I wanted it from different styles because I couldn't really see it because everything was based on memory and situational things. So putting it together physically, I was able to discover there was continuity. There were certain themes that I was involved with. Water became a metaphor. Uh, technology became a metaphor. It, 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 because it was part of our moment, part of our paradigm. And we are in, a, in an absolutely unique paradigm today. I discovered that everything had a, a, a natural rhythm to it. And that we, we were like um, pieces of energy uh, riding the crust of a, of a wave. And they're always in some ways represented flow, motion, and rhythm. They reveal the truth. Now, the thing that's absolutely uh, essential when you look at art, it never lies. It's like a lie detector test. Uh, you, you can see the persona, you can see the psyche, you can see the time period, you can see these schools, you can see the motivation. Uh, it's almost like you have an eye of God, and you do. 
Well, human beings are the element of God. It's all one. It's, it, it, it is a, uh, a thing that you can't even sense until you're older. And that is the function of old age. I remember my early work, which was very visceral. Uh, it had a strong, uh, organic, uh, sexual quality. And, uh, I, and that lasted an appropriate time in my life when I was young and vigorous and uh, just starting out in life. It was a new phase of my life. But I knew that kind of energy was limited. All the different ways of preserving the truth in the painting, the paradigm, the history, the influence, your motivation, uh, and why you're doing art, it's all visible. It's almost like an instinct of a, of a, um, of a dog. Uh, they intuitively sense things that are pretty accurate. They can select a, uh, uh, someone who's fearful, uh, someone who's a potential enemy, and we have that instinct and we shouldn't surrender it. We should embrace it. It's, 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 it's part of our equilibrium. Well, I did figurative painting and figurative drawing. It's a great learning, almost a mystical, metaphysical experience. The nude figure is all its vulnerabilities. But it, it was in a rigid context, and it, it wasn't uh, spontaneous. It wasn't second-by-second second decisions. And then also I discovered something with materials. The materials you use Whatever, whatever you use is an ally. Everything is in motion. Everything responds to its, its, its neighbors. There are consequences to everything. Everything is interrelated and nothing is wasted. It's creating its own elements, its own uh, special life force and, and energy. So the abstraction sort of enabled me to uh, re-examine this dynamic between logic and intuition. Logic can be the enemy of art. If you pre-think it, if you force the issue, intuition disappears. And then I was able to, uh, uh, to think about the colors that I use. And I thought it might be interesting the idea of, of buying uh, paint that was returned to Sears uh, because it was the wrong color. It was unwanted. It was uh, an orphan. And so I, I bought orphan paint and they showed gratitude to me. They performed beautifully next to each other. They showed their gratitude. It's like raising plants. Uh, I like to rescue plants that are that are at the edge of, of passing on. So I take this paint that's unwanted, that's made to, uh, that was returned, that's orphan paint, and they respond to my, uh, my care. And I preserve a life force, a thinking process that's embedded in the paint. It was gratitude on my part and gratitude on, on, the, on the paint's part. My work now has a, uh, is perhaps more abstract, but I'm still using metaphors. All my work is about journey and about uh, the uh, relationship with paint, uh, with rhythm, and the uh, painting is the body language of the artist. You may not like my body language, that's okay. But I could use my life experience in a productive way, it's like soil. It's very invigorating, it gives life purpose. You have a sense of, of what the purpose of life is. But if you can view things as this is the last time, it teaches you gratitude and appreciation Everything in your life is the last time. 
As Heraclitus said, you don't step in the same river twice. It makes you uh, appreciate the gifts of life. And I learned from that. But as fate would have it, I uh, became a, um, a teacher. And that was a wonderful experience because it enabled me to find myself. And the thing about teaching that's so unique that the, the student and the teacher both teach each other. And what occurs is profound or deep empathy. The teacher discovers by engaging with the student, the other, and you're both in the same dilemma, trying to figure out who you are because we're surrounded by change, change in technology, change in imagination, change in desire. We are like people trying to build a, a boat at sea, plank by plank. It's a continuation of life. It's, it, 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 it's a wonderful adventure. And there's no guarantee of success, but the journey itself is the reward. You know, the thing about teaching that's so, so profound and, and, and has elements of tragedy, it takes so little to, to, uh, to, to point a, a direction that the student intuitively knows is best, and that's by encouragement. It, only a couple of words can do it, I mean, by example, perhaps. But you know, I think that's the role of the teacher, to help the student find their position and time. And the thing about painting, if you attain this equilibrium, a zero gravity force, trying without trying, painting becomes easy. It just flows, it's like breathing. And, and the only way you can do that is try without trying. The harder you force the issue, the worse it becomes. And most everyone, they want to do their best and not disappoint their friends and family or disappoint themselves. So they confuse hard work with success and hard work is important if you if you want material success, you want wealth, and there's nothing wrong with wealth, but it's really the wrong, wrong focus. You can't make money or support yourself as an artist. I needed the gig of teaching to have a, um, a reasonable life which supported a family and uh, it uh, but I didn't realize the profound payback of working with students who had absolutely unique personalities unique backgrounds so I could identify the uh, the barriers, the roadblocks, uh, and, and maybe somehow be a guide to maybe suggest uh, other possibilities. But eventually you have to be on your own, you have to leave home. But leaving home doesn't mean you leave home. You never leave home. <laughs> you're, you're part of your past, you're part of your time period, and that's important because you have to build bridges. You have to attain a sense of timelessness, a weave which includes the present, 
the past and the future. We have uh, how, how many trillion cells? Wouldn't it be interesting if that's the amount of stars in our universe? The same amount of cells. And now, what about the next stage? You know, when I kick off, I uh, maybe I'll, I'll be punted into another game, another team, another universe. Who knows? Doesn't scare me. It, I'm not frightened. It's intriguing. What does this reveal? But also the, the, the intuitive subconscious working in many aspects of your life, including dream world. And people who don't dream have serious problems. You're not using an important aspect of your life. People who are on drugs interfere with this beautiful, magnificent flow of information. I can never paint when I'm drinking. You know, I, I, I can never uh, uh, establish some kind of artificial environment where I could feel that I was free. And to a certain extent, or to a great extent, the perspective of old age, and I'm an old guy, I'll be almost 85, uh, it, it gives you a sense of continuity, and timelessness is part of that that we are on a journey and uh, and when we pass on I call it being kicked off to a, another game I, uh, another situation uh, that uh, that is you know part of somewhere else and I have no idea where somewhere else is but I can't believe this wonderful energy of our psyche is wasted because nothing in life is wasted, in some way it's recycled.